I'm going to be very, very brief, and my comments are more by way of, of notice of troubling issues when it comes to this, this, this kind of legislation. And I fully understand what the member for Castries East, the Prime Minister, is saying, that we have been compelled to enact such legislation to avoid, of course, being blacklisted. Let me say at the outset, I welcome the fact that there is a categorical undertaking that persons who are depositing funds up to 10,000 US, that they will be immune from the usual scrutiny and that they will be allowed to deposit their funds um, without, without let or hindrance. <coughs> I, I think this, this is certainly very welcome and, and would certainly help business activity as a whole. But my two troubling areas. The first is that we continue to allow this, this concept of politically exposed persons to go unchallenged. I have long resisted the suggestion that The legislation singling out politically, so-called politically exposed persons is justified legislation, is reasonably required legislation. My instinct tells me that this legislation is highly discriminatory mm -hmm. and at some point it has to be challenged. Mm -hmm. The absurdity that is that we are going to in respect of politically exposed persons really tells us how easily abused that these provisions can be. I want to give honorable members a simple example which I have quoted before, not necessarily in this house, but in the public. I had a niece who went to insure a vehicle with Massey Insurance <coughs> some months back. And lo and behold, she went to Massey with her money, cash, to pay for her insurance and was told by the agent working for Massey that she must fill out a declaration to say where she got the money for her vehicle insurance because her uncle, meaning me, is in politics and she's a politically exposed person. Now, any of you around this table, how can you justify that she is being denied insurance for her vehicle because she doesn't walk and sign a document to say where she got money to pay insurance for a vehicle? And I don't know how many other persons have had that kind of experience. Yeah. When she called me on a matter, I said, you go and tell Massey, go to hell, go and get another insurance company and go and insure your vehicle. Now, it may mean that the official of the employee of Massey was misguided as to what the requirements are, but I just want to alert honorable members how easy it is for this legislation in the hands of the wrong persons to be abused. And that this notion that all politicians are correct and therefore should be swept as a whole in legislation like that, I reject it and I resent it and I repudiate it. There are politicians who are corrupt. You can't, take a, you can't paint all politicians um, in, in the same way by using such a broad brush. Now, Mr. Speaker, it is for this reason that I just want to say to the House that the time is fast approaching when the Financial Action Task Force and others can have their way in just telling these governments what they must enact and these governments must blindly follow um, whatever they say that has to be, that has to be done. Because I, I resent the fact that I'm discriminated against. I resent the fact that I have to go to a bank and when I go to a bank I'm told I must do X, Y, and Z because I happen to be a politician. I resent it. 
And for reasons like that, I frankly feel that this form of legislation ought to receive greater scrutiny. The second point I want to make, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this House enacted legislation to create a financial authority in this in, in, in St. Lucia. At the time, and I still do, I supported the legislation. I think it's necessary. Necessary that we acquire financial intelligence and what is happening, where who's who is moving millions of dollars or thousands of dollars from one account to the next. But I tell you what, Mr. Speaker. I don't see them going after the big people in this country, you know, Mr. Speaker. I don't see them going after the big people. You know who to go after? Those whom they believe are in the drug trade and those whom ordinary fishermen, ordinary St. Lucians plying up and down the place. These are the people they're going after. And I see it in my practice because my firm has had to be representing individuals. My problem, Mr. Speaker, is this, that if we are going to give these authorities the immense powers that they have, we then have to strengthen the remedies to protect citizens from abuse by these individuals. And that is why I think you will find, Mr. Speaker, increasing challenges to how these authorities utilize the powers that have been made available to them through acts of parliament. Now, don't get me wrong, Mr. Speaker. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that there aren't individuals who are applying their trade, their, their applying business uh, connected to the drug trade using fishing boats in, in this business and I'm not denying that, I accept that. But what I'm saying is that it seems to me that what is happening is that the powers that have been entrusted have been used to harass individuals like that and that those who are really guilty of committing the offenses for somehow they seem to be immune from prosecution under this legislation. This is Kabira but have also seen a situation where the remedies that are available to individuals to contest these acts seem to be rather inadequate, seem almost non-existent. So lawyers then have to resort to finding sanctuary and that's the importance of constitution under the provisions of the constitution. That should not be. That really should not be. And I accept that perhaps we need to rethink and ensure that when we enact such legislation with such drastic and such immense powers, that we also consider what remedies are available to persons who are aggrieved. You cannot tell me that a citizen of St. Lucia, for what reason or the other, happened to be traveling some country and has in his pocket over $10,000 or whatever the case is, you seize the $10,000, but then you don't give him sufficient opportunity to contest the seizure to determine whether he's guilty or not. Those things can't be right. Those things can never ever be right. And these are things, Mr. Speaker, I'm just saying at this stage, and I'm not opposing this legislation, I support the amendment. I'm just saying that we need to be put on notice that these are things we need to have a look at to ensure that we also protect the rights of the citizens of our country and the law is applied fairly. That's all I'm saying. I thank you very much.